content is king. I don't yep. believe that you can produce too much content because there's all these filters and things like that. And if you put enough out there, more people will see it. Welcome to the Matt Laracy Project. This is a show about all things real estate, business, marketing, and entrepreneurship. Each show consists of myself, Matt Laracy, a member of my team, and a guest. This week, the Matt Laracy Group team member joining us is John Paul, a.k.a. The Pope. Yeah. How are we doing, John Paul? I'm doing pretty good. How about you? <laughs> and John Paul's doing probably fantastic. You missed the Hawks game last night? Yep. Decided to skip? Yep. And, and they I, lost, so. And I think that's why they lost. It I think if you would have been there, they would have won. They would have got the W yeah. if I would have been there. Uh, so today is Season 2, Ep 12, Chicago Luxury Living. And our guest today is Vice President of Sales at Modern Luxury, uh, Modern Luxury Tom Karate. Did I get that? Close enough. All right. <laughs> I'm yet to get anybody's last name correctly here. Um, so, Tom, thanks for being here. Uh, why don't you give us a little bit about like your background and how you ended up at Modern Luxury? Sure. So, grew up lifelong Chicagoan, North Sider. Grew up going to Southside Baseball. Um, you Sox fan? I'm a Sox fan. Holy shit. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm the only yeah. Cubs fan. I grew so up I, on the South Side, and I, I like the Cubs, so yeah, we're opposites. So, right. So I'm in, I'm in a divided household. My, okay. my daughter's with me. My son's with my wife. So it's you know makes for some interesting summers. Okay. So, um, you know, grew up here, uh, went to college in town here, and uh, way back in 91, started in the media business, selling local advertising. Uh, worked for the Tribune for a very long time. Um, ex-publisher of Chicago Magazine. And uh, when I uh, had the opportunity to work for Modern Luxury, I got sick of competing with them, so I joined them, um, which was fantastic. Because Chicago, so. Chicago Magazine and CS kind of and Modern Luxury and like all their products kind of compete against each other, right? We do compete, uh, compete against each other. It's a, a very uh, you know, competitive market here in Chicago, but um, you know. Who's been winning that war, just out of curiosity? I, oh, we're absolutely winning that war. Yeah. Better, products, better products, more products better digital portfolio, you know it. So when you pivoted from uh, Chicago, uh, well, the Tribune company to Modern Luxury, did you see like a vast difference in kind of like how things were operated and stuff? You know, I saw with, with Modern Luxury over the years, I've seen them expand their portfolio. And if you're not growing in this business, you're dying in this business, yeah. right? So, you know, this year, Modern Luxury will launch, um, it's uh, almost, let's see, 86th title. So that'll be in Palm Springs. We're in 22 okay. markets. So we're a national company, uh, very robust digital portfolio, which was one of the reasons why I went to Modern Luxury. Yeah. Um, you know, gone are the days of the, you know, you know, the tile and the banner. You right. Know, 1999 called, they want their digital strategy back. Right, so, right, you know, right, right. So, so I got out of that game and um, came over to Modern Luxury and that I felt that in niche publishing, it's extremely, you know, you really have to target who you're going after, much like you guys. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Um, you know, you guys call yourself boutique and you know we call ourselves a niche but it's you know you really got to know your audience and what you're after here because you can't be all things to all people absolutely so so um, like for, for our listeners out there that aren't familiar with uh, modern luxury what, what's a quick rundown of what modern luxury is sure so what we do is um, in every city that we serve we teach so for example in Chicago we help Chicagoans live their best life we really address the one percenters. So okay. those those that are able to, um, you know, afford um, and enjoy, you know, those escapism types of experiences like extravagant vacations or they're bumping up there in that age of acquisition up to that next luxury vehicle. The ones that can live the life of luxury. That's what they want. Yeah. Right. So and that's exactly who we address. So you kind of cater to that. And, and then... Um, Let's say just in Chicago, how many different, uh, you know, like uh, magazines or, or companies you have underneath your umbrella? Sure. So we have Michigan Avenue and CS, which are core products. Okay. Um, those are those are those those city books um, that are out every month. We also have an interiors booklet, um, which caters to the design community. We put out about 50,000 of those four times per year. And about 30% of that is directed specifically towards the design trade, architects, builders, uh, planners. So that is a, a Bible for that particular category. And that's of CS right interiors, now. right? That's CS interiors. Okay. That's correct. We also do a social charity date book, which is huge in, in Chicago. Yeah. Uh, we also have a city guide and we also uh, have North Shore magazine as okay. well. Yeah, I know, uh, obviously, since we're in real estate, almost every time I walk into a high-end home, there is that CS Interiors magazine yep. that yeah. is on their uh, coffee table. Right. So, obviously, 
things are working out right, that uh, people are going through this and getting inspiration and drawing inspiration from the magazine. The, the, the print side of the business, a lot of people think that publishing would be challenged. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is, is that print is the number one inspiration to drive somebody to some to a client's website. So, you know, you get the inspiration here and then you make the transaction. You know, you really start making those calls to that yeah. particular customer from the website. So, yeah, it's great. Awesome. So. You know, now you're you're there as a, a, a vice president. Uh, what's like your day to day like? Like, what is your role there? Um, so I run the entire Chicago office. So Chicago is the hub for Modern Luxury as a company. Um, many of the editorial and production staff are housed in the Chicagoland area. Mm -hmm. um, I also have a staff of 11. And really my day to day is I try to get out with clients as often as I possibly can. Once the clients are taken care of, the rest of it sort of falls into place. Yeah. So we got to make sure that our clients are absolutely, you know, uh, satiated with what their plans are, how they're moving forward with us. If there's any problems, you know, that's what we have to talk about face to face and we, you know, we move it on down the road. So is there like, obviously you're, you're in this, this vice president role and uh, you didn't just start naturally as a vice president. Is there anything like you wish you knew before you got into like the publishing business? Cause you've been around it since you said 91, right? Since 91, right. You know, in, uh, in, in the late nineties, when the, when digital advertising really started to come up, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of dipping your toe in, you're sort of dipping your toe in a little bit more, but I really wish I would have, you know, jumped in with both feet to be a little bit more immersive in that space. Yeah. You know, while we're all, you know, while we're all, um, you know, very well versed in it now, I, I, I could see, you know, ad admitting that fault. Like I wish I was, a little bit more of an early adopter in that particular space because there was some catch up, you know, that needed to be done. Yeah. You know, so thankfully, you know, in this day and age, we're all, you know. Yeah. I mean, the digital side is interesting. I mean, we're, we're big, uh, I don't know, kind of, we're always the first people to kind of figure out things, I feel like, in our, sure. in our industry, you know, and uh, digital ad advertising was something I, I invested heavily in uh, before I had any money, uh, which, which paid off as a big gamble. But you know, you're talking late '90s. It's 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 uh, the title ads and like the the boxes sure. on the mm -hmm. side is kind of like where it is. And now you guys are probably I'm ass I'm assuming doing like targeted ads and and. Uh, maybe are you doing hyper targeted ads and things of that nature? Absolutely, it, it, it actually gets pretty scary. So if you guys had a, a million and a half dollar property and you said, you know, the, these other these other firms have the same or like properties, we could actually go put uh, a geofence on that address. So when yeah. people go into their open house or visit that, we can serve up your ad, you know, directly to those to those folks via their mobile phone. I mean, it gets it gets super hyper targeted well right? uh, you know the data out there is actually uh pretty easy to get now because uh that's a big way that a lot of companies are making money and staying relevant so a lot of people are like well how is the tribune and some of these other people uh able to stay afloat in in today's day and age and the reality is they own a lot of information um from just collecting that data over the years and people buy it so how about you guys how are you guys getting that information in the data so we we partnered up um, with another company uh, who's out of Washington, D.C. So we own okay. 93 million IP addresses, okay. um, 93 million, you know, people who we know quite a lot about. Right. You know, so if, if you guys had somebody that said, hey, listen, you know, we have a $2 million property and we need someone with a household income of a million dollars and we want to target Orange County, Manhattan for somebody who could relocate here. Right. We'll go to those zip codes and postal codes right there and, and serve them your message. Right. Um, so it, it really and. Like I said, that was one of the reasons why I went to Modern Luxury was because of the digital portfolio and how robust it was and, and, and really, because that's really, you know, the pray and spray method is, is done. It's yeah. gone. You know, it's got, it's got to go, you know, very, very targeted. Yeah. So. So uh, what about uh, like the content for the magazine? Like where does the uh, magazine content come from? Sure. So all the titles uh, have their own editors. So we have mm -hmm. all our own editors in Chicago right now. So they are the keepers and the curators of, of what's best that's going to go into the book. Um, we're not all things to all people. We're very certain things mm -hmm. um, to a certain demographic group. So those editors that we have are, are really those curators on what hits these books. And it's very localized. So for example, interiors, 80% of the content that you'll see in that book is locally generated. So you're not going to get trends of what's in LA or what's in New York. You're going to get what are the trends in Chicago. And are they just like... Are people sending you guys information trying to get into the magazine? Or is All it... the time. Okay. Um, you know, but again, our editors are the, are the gatekeepers and they're the curators yeah. of, you know, they're the aficionados of what should, you know, what's best. Yeah. So. Huh. That's so, the niche. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what about, um, like, you know, you mentioned that you used to work at Chicago Magazine and, and, you know, for us, we talk about, like, collaboration is better than competition yeah. a lot. That You know, you got to get along with your competitors because we're going to see them all the time. 
Is that kind of true in the media comp- uh, industry where like people try to work together or is it like pure competition? It's pure competition. Real competition. Um, I like, kind of oh. like that though. Oh yeah, yeah. You know it's is? great. Yeah. I mean, you know, but the fact of the matter is I still have a ton of friends and this, you know, this yeah. is a big town, small town kind yeah. of thing. And, you know, yeah. just like you guys have people at other at other firms that you're friendly with. Yeah. It's the same. But when it comes to when it comes to, you know, clients and winning business, um, you, you know, it's it's blood sport, which yeah. is pretty fun. I mean, listen, (laughs) I think that's the best way. Like, I mean, you know, you get, I mean, it is, you you know, you do have to collaborate with people and there's going to be some people we we like and unfortunately there's going to be some people you don't like and that's just like how life works. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you're talking about like, you know, modern luxury, obviously it has a luxury in it. You're, you want to try to stay like, uh, as a very uh, elite brand. Uh, and when you talk about elite and luxury, I mean, one of the first things that comes to your heads are celebrities, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, like you guys are able to get a lot of like, really A-list celebrities that come into your guys' uh, mm-hmm. portfolio. And uh, obviously right. not just, you know, Chicago, but probably uh, all across all your, sure. your your 86 brands, you said, right? You know, how are you guys able to get them to, to be a part of it? So when when Modern Luxury calls, I mean, it, the, you know, just the sheer scale of us being the, the largest luxury uh, media company in the country, you know, our phone calls are answered. So, for example, in our Hamptons magazine, which we do just in season, you know, John yeah. Legend was on the cover, yeah. which is awesome. It's a pretty big deal. You know, it's, it's, yeah. a kind of, it's kind yeah. of a big deal. Yeah. Um, you know, Taraji P. Henson was on yeah. uh, our CS cover. We just did an event with Busy Phillips here um, at one of the dynamic restaurants. You know, so when Modern Luxury calls, people know that you know they can they can go ahead and answer the phone, and and, and all those celebrities usually have some sort of a tie to the city. Uh, to which the cover they're on. Yeah, so Busy Phillips, sure. her family lives in Oak Park. I mean, you know, so oh. they all came to the event and it was great. And yeah. met her mom and she's totally cool. And yeah, uh, you know, so it's totally it's, normal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's totally normal. <laughs> yeah, you know, so um, it, you know, uh, another example in our in our CS twenty fifth, um, our our fashion shoot was actually done at the Palazzo Priva, uh, Fendi's private apartment. Yeah, um, we shot Karl Lagerfeld's last collection there. That wow. doesn't happen to everybody. Wow. Yeah, it's you know, crazy. so we, you know, so we have that gravitas to get in, you know, where we need to get in and people respond. So you've been able to build this brand that like, you know, celebrities are kind of like, this is part of like our portfolio of like who we have to do to try to identify our brand. Like, how is the Chicago celebrity scene? Because obviously New York, LA, and I'm sure like Miami's got like a lot of, it's probably pretty easy because they're just like, everybody's there. Like, right. is there, would you say there's a lot of celebrities in Chicago? I, I wouldn't say a lot, but the fact of the matter, I mean, you, you'll see a, a Taylor Kenny at, you know, one of our parties or walking down the street. I mean, it, you know, it really doesn't matter, right? Right. Yeah. But in the Midwest, I think it's a little different because, yeah. it, it, you know, oh, we're like, oh, yeah, that's Taylor Kenny. I don't want to go up to him, though, you know, because we're Midwest right. and it's, yeah. you know, it's a little bit more even keeled. Yeah. And so we let, you know, so everybody gets to, you know, go out and do their business when you see a Blackhawks player walking down the street or a Cubs player walking down the street. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, that's really cool, you know. Right. So it's, uh, but I think it's like just different. Right. Just we're not yeah. hounding them. Yeah. yeah. I think it's different in New York and LA. It's just different. Yeah. You know? So, you know, I mean, so, so there, maybe there are more uh, celebrities walking around Chicago than we think. I, I wonder how many people actually, like, don't even recognize them here. Like, I, I bet maybe. a lot. They're probably, yeah, going notice all the time. Yeah. Just yeah. Walk right by. Right. So I, I remember hearing the story that like Mac like ran into like uh, was like shopping at like a Walmart or something like that up in, at like in some North Shore place and like mm-hmm. some parents came up to him and he was like oh my god I actually can't believe somebody recognized me like oh, yeah. Really? yeah yeah like, pretty I cool. mean so it's like kind of right. like I don't know maybe a little bit more off the beaten path here um, so like is it hard then to get the celebrities to come to Chicago since we're not as big of like a celebrity scene as LA and New York and it, stuff? It, it all depends. Like if, if somebody does have a tie here to Chicago, they're usually making, you know, th- there's a reason why they're on the cover. So, um, you know, they may, ha- they might be having a book signing coming up or something like that where they're on a book tour and, you know, so we'll put them on the cover, they'll plug their book and then, you know, they'll do an event with us. So yeah. it just really all depends on the timing and, and that sort of thing. Like, um, Sebastian Maniscalco is coming in November. He, j- he we nice. were going to put him on our cover, but he's like, I just had a kid, and I, you know, I can't, you know, can't, can't make the time or whatever. Yeah. You know, so it just, it just really all depends. We try to look for that locality here. So if they're coming in town, it's kind of <clears> like, <throat> hey, we get like, what do they have going on? Yeah, or, we could put you, know, you on, and then you know, they'll yeah. help promote your thing and yeah. blah blah blah. So mm-hmm. that's cool. So like, also, um, you know, you, you think luxury, you think you think food, right? Restaurants. Uh, Chicago's got a a pretty big restaurant scene. I've I've read in numerous things that Chicago's got the best restaurant scene in the country, so, uh, but uh, you know obviously some people in New York and LA can rival that. Uh, wh- like, how do you feel like the restaurant scene in, is in Chicago compared to like the other cities that you guys do? Well, I think it's pretty robust and it's also accessible. 
Yeah. Right. So, I mean, you have like a um, Beverly Kim and Johnny Clark, uh, you know, they did Parachute. Now they have Wherewithal. You know, mm. Parachute was, you know, James Beard winner, tough, yeah. tough to get into. But now, you know, these two, these two pair up this husband and wife team, they're opening up Wherewithal, which is a completely horse of a different color. You know, it's kind of a little bit yeah, more yeah. freewheeling. But that's world class cuisine and it's here. Right. You know, so I think, you know, you've got a lot of groups out there, um, you know, like Boca, for example. I'm a big, right. I'm a big dynamic fan. Anything dynamic, I'm a huge fan it's a client of. of ours. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Bandit, Bandit's amazing. Yeah. Um, they're, and they're a great partner of ours. But um, it's, there's always something new, which is cool. Yeah. So, like, Yugen just won our uh, restaurant awards over the summer, you know, as, as new restaurants. So, it's, um, and it takes a lot of effort, you know, to get out to these places. How do you guys determine, like, the, the winners of, like, the words? Because you guys do, like, a whole thing for, like, which restaurants you guys feel are the best, Yeah, right? it's, all, it's all editorially and content-driven. Yeah. So it's not, uh, you know, it's something that's done very organically and altruistically. You know, those restaurants get visited, um, you know, and they stand on their own merits. You know, yeah. if they don't stand on their own merits, you know, we're not going we're, we're to sink someone if it's, a, you know, we're not, you know, we're not that. If, if the restaurant really isn't up to our par, we're not going to, you know, go ahead and, and rip it. But we're certainly going to give the props where, where yeah. they do. So um, the hard restaurants that are, uh, like, really difficult to get into, would you say that, like, you don't have to wait for reservations, Norma? I'm not going to say that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you might eat for free every now and then? No, no, that, that yeah. is absolutely not okay. the case. Because yeah. um, okay. that, that, that might smack of a little impropriety there. So we, no, so that is not the case. You know, I always say, like, the only thing I don't like about, like, the really good restaurants is the fact that, like, I'm the type of guy that, like, is, like, last minute when it comes to food. Like, I could book a steakhouse and then that day, like, I just don't feel like I want, like, pasta. So, like, maybe you want to go to, like, a Monte Verde or something mm. like that, right? Did yeah. I say that right? Yeah. <clears throat> is that right? Verde, is yeah. it Valer? <laughs> which, is, which is a great restaurant yeah, by the way yeah, which really i love like, yeah, right. uh, but my, my my point is <laughs> this kid thinks he speaks italian i don't I know. mean i could speak hey italian. he's got the he's yeah. got a little yeah. bit how do you say it volare volare volare, volare? yeah, yeah. It's not, it looks like thing too yeah you know? i mean look uh, at this but my point is is that you know then it takes impossible to get into so i'm like ah, i'll never try it just because of that but i mean we do have like like a really good luxury restaurant scene, and I I think that kind of helps put Chicago on the map more because I don't know maybe it's the weather because it's shitty out six months a year so you just have to like <laughs> sit inside and eat. But yeah. how do you think our restaurant scene on, and your you know modern luxury's point of view uh, compares to like some of the other big cities that you guys do? Um, well, I, I do like the word accessible. Yeah. You know it's. You know, and, and certainly some of, most of the restaurants here do have some lifespan to them. Whereas yeah. I think that sometimes in New York and LA, you get that, you know, that sort of flash in the pan and didn't go well, and boom, it's gone. Yeah. Um, I, you know, here I think it's a little bit more stable, a little bit more even keeled. Yeah. Um, you know, these restaurateurs are super smart. This isn't their first rodeo. They they've got a great formula. You know, so and and plus Chicagoans, I think, are willing to learn. You know, they're, and they're willing to try. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I think that's that's half the battle. Um, what would be your favorite restaurant that you ever eaten at? You ever? Have? Yeah, ever. Uh, that's such a hard question. Yeah, that, that's a hard question. Yeah, last a cuisine. Give last cuisine. meal. Are you a steak guy? Yeah, I, I love the Perfect. last steakhouse I was at was Gina and Giorgetti. Okay, um, right. so a classic. Yeah, it. You know, that was. Uh, you know, now they're doing a little rebuild in River North. Uh, yeah. With that, but they also have another place out in Rosemont, which is which is great. Um, I, I, I think that the best, uh, one of the steakhouses that I really like, um, like good date night is Bavette's. I think that's great. Okay. Nice. Um, Gene and Giorgetti's is yeah. always, always like a super stable go-to. Yeah. Um, Garbage you know, salad. Uh, the, the whole shot. I mean the whole shot. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm so. a steak 48 guy. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's, that's, okay. I don't know what it is. Something yeah, about their steak. Good atmosphere. I like steak 48. I still put Mastro's over steak 48. Really? Yeah. Yeah. How about Benny's? Uh, that's a sleeper. I don't like it. it I no. like their wine list. I'm a big oh, wine yeah, snob. Yeah. They have a great, I, I will great admit, I, I thought their steak wasn't the best, but I will tell you, I think they have the, one of the best wine lists I've ever seen. Okay. I'd agree so, with that. Yeah. I'm, I love the wine. So we're obviously a real estate company and real estate is a big section in modern luxury. We see a lot of people, uh, kind of advertising there and try to, you know, a lot of realtors try to gravitate to, towards there because like you said, uh, the magazine is, is trying to mostly brand itself as the top 1% and why wouldn't you as a realtor want to try to, you know, align with that? Um, you know, like how do you see the Chicago luxury real estate market compared to like other cities? Sure. So, um, it being in the Midwest, 
we like our amenities, we like fancy things, yeah. willing to pay for them, but we still want a value. Yeah. Now in, in New York, you know, I, I can't even really discuss that kind of a pricing model and, and how that even works. I mean, you know, bedrooms and closets and things like that. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, I don't under, I really understand that. Even if you're in, you know, at, at 1.5 million here, at 1 million here, you're still getting, yeah. you know, what, what feels extremely substantial. And in New York, you really don't. And, you know, I think that, um, I think that the, the, uh, the, the quicker Chicagoans get over the whole second city thing is better because we're only the second city because our first one burned down right. in 1871. So whenever I went to New York, they, you know, for business, they always thought I was going to dress in like overalls and a, and a hayseed coming out of my mouth. And I just didn't get it. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, so New York, I, 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 great city, love it. But, um, you know, I don't really understand the real estate market there. And in, yeah. in LA, it's, you know, the, you know, how over the top can I be? Yeah. You know, and yeah. here that you here, you just don't really see that even though the cash is here where people can do that. Yeah. They just a little more subtle, they, a little more subtle. Subtle is a perfect word. Does, so. does modern luxury try to, uh, you know, do a lot with real estate? Do you think it's it's trying to be focused at all? Like real estate's four? our number one category. Okay. Um, you know, specifically because of the audience that we go after, mm -hmm. you know, that that one percenter. So real estate, whether it be an agent or a corporate, uh, you know, corp purchases, real estate is our number one advertising category, and it's our number one content category because who doesn't love? You know, looking at houses. Everybody yeah. real estate porn. I say it all the time. It, People just love to. I, I. I. There's times all where we meet clients and like you know, um, they love our Instagram feed because they just love look, looking at the houses that we post the videos yeah. of. I'm like, right. don't you ever get sick of some of the houses we post? They said no. <laughs> I just sitting there and like I just like looking at the different houses. You right. know, it's just what people like to do. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because it's, it's American dream. I don't know. You know. I think it's inspiration. You yeah. Know, for what they want next. I mean, you know, our our particular audience. You know, they're in that. They're in that age of acquisition where they want to, you know, they want to get from that 750 to that million or that million to 1.25. Yeah. You know, so it's 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 all about the what's next. I think. Yeah. Um, you know, they're always everyone's always looking. We're always wondering what. We, uh, I mean, that's the American way. It's capitalism. You know what's what I mean? Next? Like, what's I always next? want more, right? More yeah. and bigger is better. What What do you think is the uh, like in your opinion uh, the uh, the top uh, feature for a, a luxury home in Chicago? Oh, geez. I've heard, yeah, I've, I've heard, um, so the uh, aromatherapy showers are yeah. kind of a big deal. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> counter to ceiling backsplashes in kitchens are a big deal. Yeah. Waterfall counters, easy. Who knew that brushed bronze and brass would make a comeback? Who knew? It's, yeah, um, it's huge now. You know, deep, I, I think uh, Benjamin Moore put deep green as its number one cabinet color in 19, uh, you know, in uh, 2019. Um, Greens and blues are coming so, in. So yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. It, you know, so who knows? Maybe we'll go back to those pink toilets we had in the fifties. Nice. You know, it's it's they say they say it, it would never happen, but I don't know. I'm saying yeah, you like you know, know. who who would have you thought you'd know. have navy cabinets as like a yeah, category yeah. with gold handles? You know, yeah. what about uh, you know? You obviously feature a lot of uh, you know real estate in in your guys' uh, portfolio. Um, what do you? What does like modern luxury look for as like a really photogenic quality? Like what you know, and that might help some of our realtor listeners out there, like to try to, you know, use. You know, it's it's always uncluttered and it has to be light filled. Okay. Um, you know, unless you're going for something, unless you're going for like our, our fashion shoots, sometimes are a little bit deeper, a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but on a on a house, I I, I don't think I've ever heard a, a real estate agent describe. A house has deep and dark it's always light filled and airy mm -hmm. you know so i think that's it's got to be super super clean and that's really what we look for they may say deep and dark if they're trying to like give it like a nice spin you know <laughs> because they know it's like terrible uh, you you know you obviously also mingle with like a lot of like luxury realtors and uh, like what are some of the biggest challenges you're seeing uh a lot of them face uh here in chicago um well we were talking earlier you know there are probably going to be some announcements from the mayor uh, coming up um, about how she how she is going to, you know, shore up some of her deficits. So that could, that could have an effect. Um, Which type of ones are you talking about? Like the graduated tax and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you know we don't know what's going to happen there. The governor's talking about the same thing. Yeah. Um, you know so that 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 could affect. So in my opinion, you know the I had mentioned the the spray and pray method. You know for guys like you, you mm -hmm. know going extremely extremely 
targeted towards something specific. Yeah. I think um, that has to that has to change rather than just putting something out there for the masses. You know, you really got to identify. You know, if you're going after first time buyers or if you're going after the you know Uber luxury buyer, you just got to identify and kind of stick with it. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's that's something that I would say that you know there's so many different channels to put your messages in. And right. You just got to be choosy. Yeah, just be a little bit more focused and, you yep. know, yep. I say that like a lot of realtors, especially when they're first starting off, like everybody wants to be a luxury realtor. And I always say, well, what does luxury mean to you, right? Right. Because I see you working with a $200,000 buyer. So I say don't run around like a chicken with your head cut off. Focus on one thing, do it really well, and then, you know, branch out and be able to do two things at once, you know? Right. So what about uh, like how realtors can uh, leverage like a magazine like yours? Uh, and, uh, you know, not just the magazine, obviously, but the whole uh, brand sure. and stuff well, like that. Well, you bring up a good point because a lot of people say, well, you're in the magazine business, so it's it's just a print page. But yeah. the fact of the matter is we're, we're not seeing – um, we're, we're educating, but we're not seeing people actually use the page. And so how do you, how do you use a page of, of print? You know, so when you're, when you have a quote or when you're featured or yeah. when you have an ad, you know, particular ad in there, you're snapping a picture of it. Look who's featured on, you know, in CS magazine, yeah. you're putting that on your Instagram, you know, you're getting it out to different channels. You just can't let it sit there. Right. Right. So you actually have to use it in creative ways. Right. Um, you know, that, that also could be, you know, you're sending this to a potential client. Look, you know, we were featured. We really need to discuss, you know, our listing, our listing offer and the presentation that we made. Yeah. Let's, let's do some business. Leverage what you, you know, use so. with, with, with your clientele. So you don't just have it be, you know, maybe a, a six month campaign. You can make it, you know, forever and keep in your portfolio. Sure. You know, absolutely. And, you know, plus with these it, for, you know, as much as um, we sell properties, this is also, you know, something that's used on listing presentations, say this is part of our listing package. This is where you're going to be. And when, you know, when, when somebody in the city or even the Burb sees an oversized glossy magazine that has a you know really great bump to it, right. you know, they're going to be like, oh, I'm going to be in there. That's kind of cool. It's a good you looking know, magazine. So, it is. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, App Properties did that really well. I mean, they, they pretty much bought in a, they got to be hands on your biggest contributor for real estate, I'd assume, right? I can't, can't totally say that. I'm just wondering, like, I mean, I, I, I could at least say that, you know, I think they do have, I mean, they're, and they're obviously a competitor. I don't like, I give props for props to do it. I mean, they've done a really good job of like honing in and having their agents brand themselves well as part of it. Um, in our industry, Compass has been a big disruptor and you can kind of tell Compass and App Properties are kind of like fighting over stuff. Have you seen any of like the companies kind of like fighting come down to like magazines like yours being like, I want better placement than X? And it, like that happens like, all the time. Yeah. And you guys um, are like, we can't do anything. We're just like... It, it you know it it really all depends you know in, yeah. in the media space when you have somebody that says you know I'm going to commit X and I'm going to commit for this many years you know what do we get in return right you know so it's it's always that negotiation and you know somebody who's willing to invest in you we're willing to invest in them right you know if that means you know placement or if, if that means something on social media or you know whatever it is mm -hmm. so it's 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 always a negotiation, but um, have you seen it get more competitive lately? Because the market oh, is sure. better. Oh yeah. yeah, it's very it's 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 extremely competitive. So would you yeah. use the word cutthroat as well? I think cutthroat is um, you know everybody want uh, everybody wants to jockey for their best spot, and yeah. they're like, here's why we're you know here's why we should have that. Right. You know, so it's really you know you got to really try to please everybody. Yeah, and it's hard because like you it's know hard. you obviously run the company too, so you don't want to make anybody mad so it's kind of like a we do not uh, a slippery slope one way or the other right. so you gotta try to manage the expectations right we just want to be logical and rational about it and ex explain the right. position of, of 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 the how right that's all yeah that makes yeah. sense what about the future like you know you, you you talk a lot about um you know the digital aspect and everything like that and uh you know you read a lot like we read in our industry how we're not going to exist anymore every single freaking day i hear about how realtors won't exist i buying and all this bs nope. that sucks is going to take our jobs you read the same thing about media. Like every media's company is going to go. You know, everybody's either going to Netflix or something, and magazines will never exist again. Like, how do you guys combat that a lot? Like, sure, it's it's actually pretty easy in that um, we're not headline news. Yeah. You know, so you're getting headline news right now. You know, yeah, the, you your Twitter feed. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. And that just completely bombard you, you know, all the time, all the time, all the time, especially in your business, you guys are completely attached to your screens almost 24 seven. Yeah, I, I did actually get my real estate license years ago just to see what you guys did. Unbelievably impossible gig. I mean, I so much respect for this industry. It's very difficult. Yeah. Um, you know, but on the magazine front, whether 
you know, it's ours or Golf Digest or whatever magazine it is, mm -hmm. it's escapism. You know, so you're able to pick it up. People like the tactile quality of it. You know, that definitely, you know, has a, it's a sensory issue um, with picking up a magazine. And people escape with this. So that's exactly why I'm doing this rather than, you know, working at a newspaper, which in my opinion will be gone. Yeah. Um, you know, we're hyper local content. You know, you can live your best life here in Chicago. That's the best part about this. But I mean, so. what about like digital aspect? Because like the reality is, is that like, I mean, I know my wife every night, she just reads magazines on the couch. I mean, I, I feel like we're in the 1950s sometimes because like she'll just get like a pile of magazines. But like, you know, there are a lot of people who still like to read magazines, but will do it on a tablet. You know, and I know you guys have uh, your, your magazines on the, yeah. like you have an app and everything mm -hmm. for it and stuff like that. Um, I have to think that like people are still willing to pay a good amount of money to be able to like just be able to have the convenience of doing it on the on the app and sure. things of that nature. There Do are. you see like a lot of subscriptions only app based or anything? Um, you know that is a that is a uh, a tricky situation in that you, you know you've been ingrained with a habit yeah. you know for so long and now all of a sudden you got to switch to a tablet yeah. which most applications are not very elegant it's more of like a, just a swipe book mm -hmm. yeah um you know so it's 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 a it's it's not quite the same experience and if yeah. you're tied to your screen all day you may not want to be doing that at night I, I don't know. I can't see anymore after looking at the computer for a while. Yeah, I know it's messing like, with my eyes. Like my eyes like start. I I gotta like pick up a magazine or like, like just right. like not look at anything for a little bit. This is how this is this is the way that you get information by with escaping the screen. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Essentially. So. What What about the future of uh, modern luxury? Where where do, where do they plan on going from here? Sure. So um, our digital portfolio is expanding every day. Um, we're constantly adding new elements there. Um, we will be opening up several new books in 2020. Um, can't tell you where those are going to go yet, though. Um, it hasn't been announced to the public. Okay. So, you know, definitely growing in, uh, in all markets, which is great. So we're, uh, we're putting our money where our mouth is. Awesome. What advice would you give to someone that's trying to get into the publishing industry? Um, Make sure it's not just publishing. Make sure it's the experiential part, uh, the digital part, and the publishing part. It all works in tandem. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, your, your marketing director at your firm, there is no way on earth that he or she would put you into one channel of marketing. So you got to make sure it's very, very well-rounded. Diverse portfolio, man. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. You can't, you can't put all your eggs in one basket. I always say, if, if you have a lot of vehicles on the ground, you'll be successful. You right. know? It's just like so. you want to put all your money in Apple. You know? Right. I mean, maybe. Maybe, <laughs> maybe Apple's not. Yeah, good maybe not a good example. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. I know exactly what you're so, saying. Um, so we have what we call the Fast Five, where the co-host asks five questions. Not terribly fast, but semi-fast. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Uh, is it Comus? Yeah, it's Comus, actually. Yeah. Valar. What is? Yeah, Valar. What is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Win some, learn, learn some. Win, Win some, some, learn, learn some. some. Do you love to win or hate to lose? I hate to lose. That's there. That's the right answer. You know the corporate answer is that you're supposed to love to win, and that people won't hire you sometimes. If he's cutthroat, right? yeah, I hate to lose. That, I'm the same it. way. Right. Yeah. Hate. yeah. <laughs> Who's your biggest hero? Oh, um, I'd go with my kids. You know, with all they have to navigate through these days, it's 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 not easy. How many kids so, you got? So I have a 17 year old senior in Holy high school cow. and a 20 year old sophomore in college. Damn. Wow. Yeah. I thought you were like a 32-year-old guy. You know, you know I am, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, so, I mean, there's, there's a lot to navigate as a kid yeah. right now. Uh, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Oh, boy. Um, superpower. Great. Do you relate more to Marvel I, or DC? I'd, I'd have to go time, some sort of time travel or time, time envisioning, something like that, where you, could, where you could see it, but you can't affect it. You know, I just think it would be kind of cool. Yeah, hmm. that'd be awesome. And what makes you Chicago? I know where the potholes are, and I'm allergic to ketchup. Nice. <laughs> are you uh, really allergic to ketchup? I'm not. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, you were. At the, I mean, at the, I was at the ballpark, I Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. You don't put ketchup on your hot dog. Yeah. Um, all right, so where can people find you, and what would you want to plug? Um, LinkedIn, all day, all night. That, okay. That is, that is my, uh, that, that's my playground uh, for business. So absolutely love it, and I'm addicted to it. So, okay, yeah, we'll put absolutely. your handle up on there. Absolutely, on LinkedIn. Uh, make sure to tune into our next episodes and subscribe to our podcast. Thanks for listening to the Matt Literacy Project. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast, follow us on Instagram, and like us on Facebook.